I've noticed that you, when I talk to you, you either make no eye contact with me or too much. Damn it. You look, you'll be talking to me, but looking straight across the room that way at the wall that says Sirius XM, or you'll be riveted to me and your eyes don't blink at all yeah. like a reptile. So what's the story with that? Do you have a prep? You, you have a... I love you looking away. It's really yeah. because... I'm not looking away for the rest of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> Get used to it, buddy. Here it comes. Seriously, you just... Uh, yeah. I've never seen that technique before, Tim. I've been wanting to tell you something for quite a long time now. And I'm looking completely not yeah. at you. I, I was looking for Tim. the door. I could tell. <laughs> you wanted out. Listen, just, uh, you got questions? Yeah, uh, I do, but it. whenever I start, you cut me off. I don't think that's true. With, uh, let's check the tape. So far, ha Adam, has there been some cutting off, to be fair? There's been a little cutting off. Okay, a little bit. perfect. But you heard that one point where the, I was like, okay, I'm not going to cut him off. And it went on forever. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, so you started shaving during one of my anecdotes, which I thought was incredibly rude. I didn't, and you brought all the props. It was very impressive. All right, let's switch the tone. Let's get to know. Let's get Let, to know people. Okay, ready? Go. I'm going to ask. I'm going to get to know you. Okay, and then um, you're free. I got to, follow up questions. Yeah, you can cut me off with your follow up questions. I want to first say that I think you're a terrific actor. Now we, I've I've talked to you before. Uh, about acting and sometimes I call you up with questions about acting yeah because I think you're very smart about acting and I asked I like to ask you in that movie did you like that movie? what did you think about what that person was doing and you always break it down and you have a very good smart intuitive analysis of what that person's doing I don't know how to do any of that this may shock you but I am not an actor I don't have an actor's soul. I don't even understand how it works. I'm not. I, c I couldn't be in a scene with you. Could you imagine if you had to do a scene with me in a movie? You see what happens when I don't cut him off? <laughs> I actually wish you cut him off a little earlier. <laughs> Where's this going? Is this about you? I said you were a terrific actor. Well, you did. You started your... with a compliment, but then you went on about your thing. Yeah, with exactly. your What are you worried about? First, First of all, you're a comic genius. No, let's not get crazy. Listen, if you want to ask us, okay, I'll ask comic us genius. right back. You're a comic genius. Sure. And you've been a comic genius for like 60 years now. Okay, now it's getting crazy. I once, uh, we went on a road trip together. We did. I don't know if you call it a road, but it was a pretty lengthy drive. And I heard all about your beginnings. And uh, it's really quite phenomenal. Are you writing a book? Are you going oh, oh, to? Do you, oh, you listened to, I thought you and I went on a road trip and you heard about my beginnings. And we I'm did. Thinking, that's when? what I just said. What are you talking about? Well, what, I mean, it was just up the coast. It was just a... Uh, yeah, we, we drove up the coast. Yeah, we drove up the coast. You and I had a romantic getaway. It Let's was, just call it what it was. I know. I thought it was the first of... It was going to be the first of many, by the I way. I thought we were going to be the male Thelma and Louise, um, which when you think about it is a stupid idea. The well, you got of, the red hair. That's true. Yeah. I'm, wait, I'm Gina Davis. Wouldn't you be Susan Sarandon with the hair? Wasn't her hair kind of reddish? Yeah, but Gina Davis was taller. I think I would be Gina Davis. I mean, listen again. The listeners are going to decide, but I think it's, right? Gina Davis. All right. Yeah, you'd be Gina Davis. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Nice scene with Brad Pitt. Yeah. I gave him a start. Right. So him there. With, him, you and him with the hair dryer? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you remember that. I do. It's a good scene. Um, again, there you are, with your good acting mind, breaking down a scene. I don't know how you do it. And I'm, I'm sorry, I cut you off, but is there a question? I, I'm being it, serious. Why does this have to be a question? I don't know what these things are. This, the When it's you and me, it's not like any other podcast. Yes, usually I have questions. Okay. There's kind of a flow to it. But what you and I have and what the fans expect is something frustrating um, that starts and stops. Uh, that takes wild uh, turns um, that maybe ends up being less than the sum of its parts. That's what they want from us. I'm just worried about the ones that, like, if my wife were, were listening right now, mm -hmm. it, she would have she turned it off by now. She, well, first of all, she does that when we go to dinner. 
She's like, she, o- enough. she often reaches over and tries to enough. turn an, a, a, a volume button on my head that isn't there. Yeah. She's, I've seen her try to change the channel on me when the, when the four of us are out to dinner. Uh-huh. And my wife is right along with her yeah. on that one. It's true, isn't it? They're like, you guys go. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question. Yep. Our lives are very different. Mm-hmm. My work has always been, you stay in this one place and you do this and you don't move. Here's your talk show desk. Don't you fucking move. Your life, which I've always kind of envied, is, like you said, there's this gig in Wales, and suddenly you're living in Wales for a couple of months. I've always been fascinated by that. Does that get old, or do you still love it? I I always wanted to have a talk show. I just want to, and I still to this day. It's like one of those body switch movies. I have a whole fantasy about just like... Having a talk show, I read about someone's giving up their talk show, and mm-hmm. I think to myself, you know, should I raise my hand? What's the deal? I feel like I could, I'd love that regular. Would gig. you like that? Well, I think the answer is yes. Yeah, I love a, I love routine. I do love routine. I'm, I'm being serious. I, yeah, I, you know, my day, you know, like every, yeah, you know, I, li- I like the routine of it. I like. Um, what is it that I like about it? I don't know, but I I always thought it'd be really cool uh, it, to have a talk show. To have a talk show, yeah. What about the day in and day out, over and over again? Could you do that? Wouldn't you miss? I'm going to Japan now. You know, in it to no. be to be in a no. a, a, a robot. No, movie. I mean, uh, I mean, for years, I I no, I don't think I would. I think I I think I'd enjoy it. I, I enjoy talking to people. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know what I mean? Even though that we're not, well, we're starting to have an actual conversation here, but I do. I tricked you into it. You see what I did? You did. You lulled me. Yeah. There was some stuff at the beginning, but that's our process. So, and then we get to this, but you know what you are? You're a, a, always been a hilarious talk show guest. Um, thank you. Again, people, when they talk to me about appearances that people have made, uh, Kevin Nealon's name comes up. And uh, obviously, Norm Macdonald's name comes up, and these different names up, and your name pops up a lot. People liked you doing panel. They liked you because you come at things from a very different angle. You know, you're, you've got a very quirky, dry sense of humor, very funny. And people enjoy it. I appreciate I never thought, do I have a dry sense of humor? I think you do. Well, you have a dry delivery. Like, you have a dry delivery. Oh. You have a very dry delivery. Because I feel like in, I'm just like a puppy dog. You know, like I'm like one of those loud. Do you think of that? I mean, do, no. No. Who thinks of you as a loud? You're not a loud guy. My kids. You my, know, well, you're always angry around your kids. I've noticed that. Yeah. There's a lot of God damn it, God damn it, and then, you know, Alexis is like Tim. Tim, take it easy. And you say, "You quiet woman," right? and you do a lot of that. Right. And um, there's a lot of who touched my drink. And I need more to drink. So there's that. And when the when the one food uh, is touching the other food. Oh, oh, these foods can't touch. Right? When the eggs are touching the toast mm-hmm. and I just lose it. You know what's crazy? Do you it, ever watch, uh, remember the movie um, Sleeping with the Enemy, Julia Roberts, where she's with the crazy type A husband uh, and he needs everything to be just perfect or he flies into a rage? Sadly, I missed it. Okay, it's many, many years ago. But I'm a fan of, uh, 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 just the other day watched um, Aaron Brockovich, which is a much better movie, I'm guessing, than the one you're talking about. Yeah, the one I'm talking keep about going with your is anecdote. the one that everyone came to see because it was, oh God, again, I'm shamed every time I speak on Conan O'Brien's podcast by Tim Oliphant's Ridiculous. It's called Conan Needs a Friend. Needs is the operative word. Exactly. Yeah. I need help here. That's what I'm pointing I've never out. needed you more. That's what I'm trying to... And I've been trying to actually talk to you. I've been trying to talk to you and hang out for like six months, and the only way to do it was to book you on the podcast. Wow. What kind of friendship is that? Wow. Suddenly, we're together because I booked you on the podcast. First of all, a true buddy would have been like, where are you? You know, like, you know, you have... You're like, oh, I'm coming. I was in New Orleans for two months. You could have said, oh my God. Let's go visit Oliphant in, in New Orleans. 
We'll go hit Jazz Fest. We'll cruise around. Oh, I can't take Jazz Fest. You know what we've all been that, amazing that, about Jazz Fest? All that noodling, scale noodling. First of all, here's the thing at Jazz Fest. Everybody, they go, people go, and there's large groups, and, and in order to find people in the crowd, people have flags and stuff, so they're like, that's our group. But with you, we could have just been like, where's Conan? We could just see you. Right. We're like, there's that red... Inflatable there. thing outside of a car uh, car lot. Right, we're just looking flapping f- around. We're just looking for yeah, like a really unattractive Gina Davis. Okay, where, you know what? Where is she? I didn't come here. To, where is she? To be called an unattractive Gina Davis. You could have flown out. Here's the main point. I'm not Why that kind you, of guy. I'm not that kind that of guy. Way? I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not a kind of guy who says it's time for me to hit the big easy and hang with Oliphant at the Jazz Fest. Yeah, that's the opposite Would of who I great. am. No, I can't do I that. I was working. What kind of jazz are they playing? Is it like... Is it that kind of thing? I think there is a tent for that. I How about... Scoot, scat, 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 Is that happening? Because I can't do that. Give and then one, someone's... Just give a third example, because I think people want it. amazing you don't know how much i could just see you in star wars on that last one <laughs> i could have seen you you could have been in the bar right and there could have been little uh yeah subtitles underneath me saying i'll give you 40 grebgars for the glub glub right yeah damn